Wow, Pandora's box. You guys have been trying to get me to watch this video for uh, a long time now, actually. I think one of my one of my mods wanted me to react to this, I think it was like a month ago. And I was like, I don't got time for that. It's two hours long. Guys, we have time for it today, all right? We're going to at least watch 30 minutes of this right now. And then we'll get through, uh, we'll get through it part by part, all right? Let's take a look. Warning, the video contains subjects and footage that some viewers may... I can't read that fast. I uh, find disturbing. All information contained within has been made publicly available by the people or entities discussed. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm scared. The question is, does the international addiction to an internet game represent a danger? Maybe, but there is also no indication that anything can slow the explosive growth of the intoxicating game called World of Warcraft. parents were so worried about me like as a kid i was just i played runescape for like 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day or something and my parents were like you got to go outside and i was like but i already i did my chores and I, you know i'm getting good grades and like you know I, why can't i play runescape and then one day i saw wow at the store and then i told my mom i would quit runescape forever if she bought me wow and for some reason she went for it and i quit runescape forever i haven't touched it since um, but I'm still playing WoW, so... <laughs> Actions are gonna matter more than any of these Than any of these All right, you don't go. Ready, guys? Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. So we got it just right in. The power level, where I basically get all the good loot, and they get all the great experience. I forgot about Wow Hobbs. That's a name that was just like, it's been in there. I forgot about him. of MMORPGs, you'll scarcely find anyone who hasn't heard of, if not played, the World of Warcraft. Released in 2004, it would quickly begin to make a name for itself, garnering worldwide praise for its innovation, accessibility, and the closeness to the community by its developer, Blizzard. I remember I, I asked Shannon when we first met my wife, I, I asked her if she knows what World of Warcraft was, because, uh, you know, it's kind of what, what I do, you know what I'm saying? And, uh... <laughs> She goes like, oh yeah, isn't that that game like, that everyone used to play in high school and then like you would just never hear from them again? Like they would just like drop out and like you would just, they were just off the face of the planet Earth and I was like, yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> Blizzard Entertainment, both <laughs> yeah. celebrated and condemned for its addictiveness. In the span of a few short months, it would not only become the most popular of the MMORPG genre, but also set the standard for all of those that would follow in its footsteps. Many would try, and over the course of 15 years, few would gain even a fraction of the player base of the seemingly yeah. unstoppable giant. 
Today though, a much different picture is painted. What was initially considered inspirational in the world of game development now leaves behind a controversial history marred with what many describe as betrayal, deception, and squandered potential, leaving many asking the question, how? A snapshot of history of a world created within a world. A microcosm of mayhem. A virtual playground for humanity to show each other their best and their worst. This is the story of Blizzard Entertainment and their iconic MMORPG, The World of Warcraft. At the dawn of the new millennium, the online world was growing rapidly. Yeah, the go. intellect Here's of here. man and the advancements of technology combined bestowed upon the world the creation of the internet by Al Gore. News of a new Star Wars movie was spreading, the storyboard for The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring had been completed, nerd culture was about to reach critical mass, yeah. and Bill Clinton did not have sexual relations <laughs> Dude, with that woman. We had to go so there. entered the yeah. massively multiplayer <laughs> online role-playing game, or MMORPG for short. The creation of the first MMO can be traced all the way back to the 70s, depending on your definition and standards, as they would be text-based. Though they had existed for decades, it was only near the new millennia that they would attract a sizable player base. Although varying in implementation, they all shared the central idea of an online, persistent world to be shared with players from all over the globe. A genre unique in the sense that there is no planned end, no credits rolled nor thanks for playing. Game content would be added as long as there are players playing, and the journey would only end when the player decided that it was over. A concept that was remarkably foreign to many at the time. In these early years, many would try their hand in breaking through the genre, and overall, it would contain a niche audience. Some were beginning to make a name for themselves though, such as Origin Systems Leap into the online persistent world with Ultima Online, an isometric fantasy game memorable for its PvP combat in particular. Mythic Entertainment, who would later develop Warhammer Online, took their shot with The Dark Age of Camelot, a third-person take on Arthurian lore mixed with Norse mythology and high fantasy. Star Wars would make their debut into the world of MMOs with the 2003 release The Star Wars Galaxies, an MMO with a more heavy focus on community and sandbox gameplay. And most prolific at the time was EverQuest in 1999 by Verant Interactive and 99 Studios, decrowning the previously reigning champion, Ultima Online. Just 24 hours after launch, it would quickly become the most subscribed MMORPG at, uh, 10,000 subscribers. Wow, that's wild. Yeah, Different really. Time. 10,000 was the most subscribed MMORPG at the time. It wow. would eventually peak at over 500,000 years after its launch, but as history has shown, this would yet be a fraction of the potential that was hidden within the genre. A potential that had yet to be realized. Oh. The world didn't even know how good it could be. The MMO was on the rise, and the time to strike was nigh. And in the background, a beast was stirring, wow. silently observing yeah. the strengths, the weaknesses, the successes, and the failures of the then relatively unexplored genre. Look at all of the games that Blizzard was competing with. And in the background, a beast was stirring, silently observing the strengths, the weaknesses. Look at the graphics of all of these games back in like early 2000s. And then you launch World of Warcraft. Like, WoW is still, in 2024 standards, WoW Classic, Vanilla, Era, whatever you want to call it, is still a very, very, very good game. Yeah, the graphics are a bit dated but in 2024, but think about how good it was for its time. If it's still good today, as a standalone game, how good it was on launch, man. Oh, like, yeah, everything was even close, dude. It just wasn't even close. The successes and the failures of the then relatively unexplored genre. Blizzard at this point already had established themselves as innovators with their Diablo, Starcraft, and Warcraft series. The latter being a real-time strategy game set in a fantasy world of orcs, elves, magic, and adventure. And having seen the success of other fantasy-based games such as EverQuest, the table was set. 
After halting development on an abandoned project, a small team of developers were left in limbo and were searching for inspiration on their next game. They had the IP, they had the funding, and most importantly, the timing. Timing is everything, man. September 2nd, 2001. Long before Blizzard was big enough to hold their own convention, they held a panel at London's European Computer Trade Show, and it was then that the public for the first time saw the world of Warcraft. Oh. I've never seen this footage. They made it clear. This was not the sequel to the popular RTS series at the time, but rather something completely different. Players would transition from controlling pre-made heroes and progressing through a campaign to creating their own heroes and making their own stories. The game would be multiplayer on a massive scale, bringing together fans of not only the Warcraft series, but of MMOs as a whole. The reaction, however, was mixed. Some waited with eager anticipation, trying to imagine their beloved series making its leap into the massively multiplayer setting, and many were upset at the abrupt change of focus, preferring Blizzard to concentrate on what was ever. proven to work, instead of taking a gamble into unfettered territory. The idea of paying a monthly fee to continue playing was a hard pill to swallow at the time, wow. especially by Blizzard fans who had grown accustomed to the one-time purchase models set standard by the company. Work would continue on the project, however, and the very first interview would be claimed by the Computer Gaming World magazine. By this time, EverQuest was the clear reigning champion, but the genre as a whole had one fatal flaw, and that's the learning curve. XP loss, gear loss, and even permanent character death were commonplace in nearly every game of the genre, and combined Legend. with the large time investment in playing, it cultivated a very niche and hardcore community and the everyday casual player would quickly succumb to the intense difficulty and seek entertainment from other, more forgiving games. It was a genre with a focus on character progression, with death penalties centering around character regression and a steep learning curve to go along with it. However, now this transitionary hardcore. period would prove to be a key moment where players for the first time would leave single-player games that looked like this into this online sprawling world they were incomparable to each other, and although it's funny to think now, it was an intimidating thing. The time investment was, and still is, incredibly high. You had to have a computer, you had to have a good enough graphics card to run it, you had to have internet, and you had to pay a subscription. The amount of hurdles standing between the average person and the game were already high, and combined with the unforgiving gameplay of the landmark titles representing the genre, it was just too much for the average person. But it was this person, this untapped market of new and casual players that Blizzard would set their sights on. World of Warcraft took a completely different style of approach. During a time when XP loss was the bare minimum penalty for dying, World of Warcraft made you simply run back to your corpse. Uh, one of the great things here is that uh, when you die and death is an inevitability in all these games, it's really not that big of a deal. All other online RPGs make death a really bad thing because dying should be bad, right? Well, in World of Warcraft, <laughs> pretty much all that happens man. is you sit out for a bit. You respawn back at a graveyard, and you run and get your corpse, and you respawn. You don't lose experience points, you don't lose your items or any of that stuff. When hitting the max level took years in other games, World of Warcraft it took months for most players. And when systems were complicated and confusing, requiring external literature to understand, World of Warcraft systems were relatively straightforward, and when character stat and template choices were often permanent, World of Warcraft featured costly but reversible methods of character progression and customization. In other games, you had areas designed for large groups of high-level players, referred to as raids, but they were commonly out in the open world, which resulted in having to compete against one another for kill credit. Due to this, there was a greater sense of urgency to complete the raid in its entirety in one sitting before any other guild had the chance to catch up and bring unwanted competition. 
marathon sessions of guilds setting up 24-hour shifts was a common strategy to maintain dominion of these raids. In many Jeez. cases, to the detriment of the health of the players, this Final Fantasy XI boss was engaged for 18 hours mm. until players were forced to quit after they began to faint and oh vomit. My gosh, Though dude. this boss in particular was nerfed shortly after the incident, this was the state of the endgame for most MMOs in these early stages. However, World of Warcraft had been one of the first MMOs to standardize instance raids where players and guilds could create their own unique raid instances, resetting on a weekly basis. And as for the raid bosses themselves, although today seen as archaic and simplistic, at the time they were quite advanced. Oh, in yeah. a genre where raid bosses boiled down to having a unique name with a higher health pool and increased damage, World of Warcraft would add unique, and often at the time, complex mechanics that required teamwork and thought to overcome, which in turn would become one of the game's major selling points. The worlds had NPCs, but were commonly static, whereas the world of Azeroth felt more alive with dynamic NPCs going about their daily lives. Simply put, what it didn't invent, it improved. MMOs were in a constant state of almost theirs, and World of Warcraft was the first one to bridge that gap and bring it into a more mainstream audience, and it reaped the rewards because of that. The game would continue development throughout the years, with teasers being released in the form of magazine interviews and trailers, keeping the curious onlooker abreast on its direction. And after a long alpha and beta testing period, the moment of truth came on November 23rd, 2004. Oh. I was gonna try to turn it up more. <laughs> Go to hell, Blizz, your servers suck. <laughs> I can't play the damn game. Sounds about right. Its strategy of appealing to the casual gamer worked well. A little too well. Blizzard in no way was prepared for the frenzy of players eager to get into the world. Disconnects, lag, and rollbacks would persist heavily for the opening months, and still consistently through the next couple of years. Forms daily would be filled with outrage, demands for a refund, and even threats of lawsuits. The miraculous thing about it though, is that it didn't even seem to slow its growth. Jeez. The launch today is looked at as disastrous, and yet still, people came back again and again. Good How game can a game can that's carry, playable man. maybe 50% of the time hold such a demand? Well. It's because it, it was, was good. that good. Yeah. Years of development had paid off as World of Warcraft quickly became a hit, almost immediately dwarfing all competition at the time and robbing them of their player bases. It was the vampire of the MMO industry at its release, and it would suck the life force out of every single previously mentioned staple of the genre. But there was one unfortunate thing. The unfortunate thing was it launched right when WoW launched. Yep. So WoW brought the whole industry down, not just us. Every online game out there went down as soon as WoW went out. Yeah, WoW was it. like a huge succubus of players <laughs> went over there and drove into WoW. And it drove all our numbers down. 60 levels of progression and a world of challenges awaited the eager player base. And there would be many landmark moments just waiting to be claimed. Players rushed to the max level, and the title of the world first level 60 went to a player named Zenith, a troll rogue on the Stormreaver server on December 3rd, a 2004, legend. a little less than two weeks after release. Two By today's weeks? standards, incredibly slow, but back then, a no-life nerd as onlookers That's weren't shy of expressing. On January 30th, 2005, the game would see its first raid cleared with the death of Anixia, taken down by the guild Ruined on the Proudmoor server, and many players for the first time got to see the famed epic quality items that she hoarded. <laughs> yeah. Blizzard would spend the following years perfecting their craft. As their subscriber base increased, so too did their budget, and more servers would quickly be added to support the booming player base. New patches would not only release new raid tiers, but also systems, items, and much more. And in May of the same year, the subscriber base would see its biggest surge for the next decade. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay guys, uh, these eggs have given us a lot of trouble in the past. Uh, does anybody need anything off this guy? Or can we One of the earliest videos to go viral in the world of Warcraft was created by the guild Pals for Life. The guild was strategizing on how to clear out a particularly tricky room in the upper Blackrock Spire raid. Uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. We should be able to pull it off this time. Uh, what do you think, Abdul? Can you give me a number crunch real quick? Uh, yeah, give me a sec. I'm coming up with 32.33, uh, repeating of course, percentage of survival. Oh, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so thumbs up! Ready, guys, Let's or... do this! Leroy! He's <laughs> so iconic, man. Oh my god, he just ran in. Save him! Oh jeez, stick to the plane! Oh jeez, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Stick to the plane! And in the midst of the conversation, a group member, Leroy, charges in prematurely with reckless abandon, causing the death oh, of the entire what group. A I can't move! Am I lagging, guys? I can't move! What, what, what the hell? I can't move! Oh my god. The eggs keep oh, alive! Yeah. More responding! I don't think you can cast with that shit. Oh my god! Shout Someone in the chat says, what? This was staged? Oh man, I don't want to be this guy. This is like telling someone Santa Claus isn't real. Which, by the way, um, yeah, yeah, this was, this was, this was set up. We got it, we got it, I 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 got it, I'm sorry, chat. Oh my god. <laughs> god damn it, Leroy. Wait the video a was later revealed to be staged, <laughs> but nonetheless, it caught on like wildfire, and it was shared across multiple websites and forums, making it one of the first videos for World of Warcraft to gain viral popularity. Onlookers were intrigued. Word of mouth proved to be a prolific advertising vehicle for the game. It's hard to say today just how many people watched the video, as some of the uploads have been lost. The original upload on Warcraft Movies Today sits at nearly 19 million views, and the original YouTube mirror reached at least 46 million before it was taken down. Why was it taken and down? Surviving Mirrors Today sit at a total combined count of around 24 million. Regardless, it's by far the most viewed Warcraft-related video, even to this day, over 15 years later. Wow! It was so popular, in fact, that it was later featured as a question in the trivia show Jeopardy, just a few months later in November. This role-playing game out in 2004 <laughs> returns game. to the world of Azeroth, where heroes like Leroy Jenkins do battle. And that would be the world of Warcraft. Oh, come on! Pathetic. Bunch of noobs. Bunch of noobs. The Leroy craze wasn't the only phenomenon to spawn from the game, though. September of 2005 saw the release of the Zul'Gurub Raid, the final encounter of which was a boss named Hakar. He had an ability called Corrupted Blood, which dealt some damage to a player, and if they were to stand too close to another, it would spread to that person. In a contained environment, it's just another raid mechanic. That is, until one player, intentionally or otherwise, managed to create a virtual pandemic that spread across every single server. The mechanic had one fatal flaw. By getting a pet companion afflicted with the disease and then dismissing it, it would persist when the pet is summoned once more. This person did just that, but in a crowded area, and spread the affliction to every nearby player and the NPC. <laughs> so wild, and as dude. long as there were living hosts, there was no escape. Entire cities became infected by the plague. <laughs> That's actually so cool, dude. <laughs> Word quickly spread, and other players intentionally started spreading the disease. Oh, no. Ironforge, Stormwind, Orgrimmar. Every major capital city was a death hub and was uninhabitable by lower level players. The spread would continue to go on for days, until Blizzard eventually hotfixed the disease, but the resulting chaos remains to this day to be one of the most memorable moments in the game's history, and has even been used in real-world research of the spread and reaction of contagious diseases. That's wild, bro. Real and true. Though there are many memorable landmark moments yeah. in the game's history, some are more controversial than others. In 2006, now, on the, the Illidan server, a player by the name of Fajin passed away suddenly from a stroke, and in memoriam of one of her favorite activities, fishing, her guild had decided to host yeah. an in-game funeral service to pay one final tribute to her. There were two problems, though. It was publicly advertised on the Realm forums, 
and Illidan was a PvP server yep. where players of the opposite faction could freely attack one another. A guild, Serenity Now, saw the thread and they felt that they would join in to pay tribute, but in a very different way. Having snuck through a nearby tunnel leading into the zone, an entire raid team prepared to crash the funeral. As players lined up to pay tribute to their friend, the raid quickly closed in on the location, and to make matters worse, in an effort to roleplay, many of the attendees had unequipped their armor and weapons, like, making idea them defenseless was this, against the surprise onslaught. The funeral was, was the quickly and easily oh, dispatched. Gosh. Serenity now would become infamous on their server, and the crash still stands today as one of the most controversial in-game events Dude, in its entire so history. Up, All of these moments serve a crucial role in the telling of the history of the game, and they would serve as a reminder of the reasons why it became such a success. It's due not only to its own merits, but perhaps even more drastically by the community that the world of Azeroth yeah. was comprised of. It bled this world, culture. however, was about to change. How many of you have played World of Warcraft? Due to the success of World of Warcraft, Blizzard for the first time held their own event, a convention centered solely around Blizzard games named BlizzCon. This was, and remains to be, a unique aspect of the developer to hold a personalized convention tailored to their products. A form oh, of celebration man. of- I forgot about uh, how sick the uh, StarCraft II, if you guys have ever been to BlizzCon, how sick the StarCraft II uh, Global Finals tournament stage used to be. It was so hype, um, man. This was, and remains to be, a unique aspect of the developer to, I just saw, like, Huck to and hold Nesty. a personalized convention tailored to their products. Yeah. A form of celebration of not only the games that they're creating, but also the already massive community that they've built. The strong focus on the community would be something that Blizzard would become known for, and it created a loyalty of sorts from the players. It felt like it was more than a game. It was a community of people sharing their combined love and passion for the worlds that they created. You guys, you guys take care of us, man. You, just, you guys really take care of us. Diablo, Starcraft, Warcraft. Fans from around the world would plan vacations around it. Yeah. Longtime friends and guildmates would meet each other in person for the first time. And BlizzCon as a whole would become a very crucial part of Blizzard's identity from this point forward. And in the very first convention, held in October of 2005, a bombshell announcement was unveiled. The World of Warcraft is about to get bigger with the release of its first expansion, Man. The Burning Crusade. Man. You are not prepared. Dude, WoW was just set up for like so much success. Like the, 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 the timing, like how good the game was. It was just like for so many years, it was just like W, 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 W. You know what I mean? This is so good. GameStop Midnight the Release. Yeah, I was there, what baby. Players had come I was to there. expect from the world of Warcraft and more. They would step in to the world of the Outland and progress through 10 more character levels, new zones, talents, dungeons, spells, raids, races, a profession, oh. a new PvP system, oh, and much more. It would add on to and improve in just about every aspect of the game. But it's still 2005, and there's a lot of game left to conquer before players began worrying about their foray into the Outland. There were dragons to kill and DKP to acquire. Odd groups got to left, even groups got to right. That means one, three, five, seven, left, two, four, six, eight, right. <laughs> so good. In the game, you had casual, <laughs> hardcore, and everything in between, and there were some who took it even further beyond. No reason to lose my tank, and I am blaming you, because I blame my. Um, I, don't, I can fucking do it, everyone can do it. Do it right. This is bullshit! Videos of a more serious or angry nature would start to spring up at this point. Those of raid leaders chewing out members for failing and properly performing the mechanics of a yeah. boss fight. Well, crush him was fair and serious. WHO THE FUCK WAS THAT?! <laughs> crush him, WHAT THE FUCK?! Welps, left side, even side, many welps, now handle it! Fuck! 
the most prolific of which being Dives, the raid leader of the guild, White Club. Anixia, at this point, had been slain by numerous guilds, and after some unsuccessful attempts, one of the members decided to- Imagine how frustrating it was back in 2005 to raid. Like, okay, you have 40 people. Like, 30 of those people probably have less than 15 FPS because computers suck. And then, like, half of those people probably have more than, like, 100 MS because internet sucks because it's 2004, 2005. Half those people are probably on, like, dial-up or something. The majority, like, 90% of the raiders probably have zero add-ons installed. Or the ones that they do have installed are probably giving them Lua errors constantly, non-stop. Half the people in the raid probably have the complete wrong spec on. Half the people in the raid are probably full green items or like don't even know what best in, like pre bis means or is and probably just have a bunch of random gear they bought from like the auction house or got random quests. Most of these people are probably not moving with their mouse. They're moving with the damn arrow keys. And like, I like <laughs> just so many factors back then that like as a raid leader, it's probably just like, come on, man. Like imagine being the one Giga Chad. Back then, you have full keybinds, all right? You have like a super PC, you have fantastic ethernet, wired internet, man. You got like headphones, like triple monitors and everything and you're just gaming there and your guild just a bunch of noobs. And you're the guild leader and you're just like. <sighs> to record what would later become one of the biggest meltdowns in history, the Anixia wipe animation. Much like Leroy, the animation would quickly become popular, and it highlighted the frustrating side of coordinating 40 people and clearing the challenging raids. Don't play like you're just fucking going through the motions. You'll get your goddamn loot eventually. Just, oh, damn it! <laughs> fucking bullshit! Yeah, I know. Uh, well, we're all gonna get attacked uh, because we have no warlock here. No nice warlock. job, you right. fucking idiot! Hey, hey, warlock! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> you stupid fuck! Stop! These videos would paint players in a much less flattering light, as many people would become so obsessed that they would shirk real life responsibilities Who would do and fall out of contact with friends. <laughs> quit work. During the shirk real life responsibilities, he has he has his uh wow character. <laughs> well, uh, flattering light, as many people would become so obsessed that they would shirk real life. <laughs> shirk real life responsibilities. He flashes Grand Marshal. <laughs> Yeah. Responsibilities <laughs> and fall out of contact with friends, quit work or school, and in the most extreme cases cause harm to themselves or others. Yeah. In Korea of June of 2005, the four month old child of a couple oh, would this. suffocate yeah. when Jeez. left unsupervised for several hours as the parents were playing World of Warcraft in an internet cafe. The phrase oh World of Warcraft was coined, shedding light on the dark side of video game addiction, particularly that of MMOs and the consequences of obsession. Something that the media was not shy of reporting as World of Warcraft, due to its popularity, would find itself at the center of this war against video game addiction. Computer games, he's playing them an incredible 16 hours a day. His mother says his personality has changed and that he's become moody and violent and his addiction is tearing the family apart. To many, it was more than a game. It was a virtual life with the graphical interface. It attracted people from all walks of life and blended them together in the chaos of this it online world. It was like world. too good. News of the Burning Crusade remained to be scarce, as it was still under NDA in the Friends and Family Alpha. A blog post teasing new features would be shared scarcely, but otherwise, it was still largely a mystery outside of what was shared at the 2005 BlizzCon. The excitement was palpable, and players from all over the world couldn't wait to get into the Outland. The beta test for the expansion started not too long after, as players got to discover and explore its features, and shortly after, World of Warcraft would become the focus of the cartoon series South Park oh, yeah, with their Make this. Love Not Warcraft episode. The episode detailed the boys' fight against a hacker antagonist and their struggle with video game addiction. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Boy, isn't he? Though on release, it was an instant success. <laughs> Many years later, series co-creator Trey Parker detailed his worries with the episode, revealing that he even tried to get it pulled as he feared that it simply wasn't funny. But oh, as no, history has shown, the episode would become an instant success, and despite the fact that the series at this point now has over 300 episodes, 
It remains to be one of their most popular to this day. Oh, wild. Day. I didn't know that. Looks like you're about to get pwned. Yeah! <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Wait, why are they outside? They should be at home on their computers about to play. January 16th finally came, and it marked the beginning of a new era. Go buy it. The official Back end then. of vanilla World of Warcraft. People lined up outside of stores and tents in the freezing cold. Launch parties were held, and the community was stronger than ever, and pulled together oh, with their one shared like trait. Okay. Their fear of women. Er, I mean... <laughs> Their collective love for the game. At this point, it had amassed roughly 8 million subscribers by the expansion's release, never once reporting a loss and holding on to the lion's share of the market. In the background stirred some serious competition, however. Mythic Entertainment, who developed the Dark Age of Camelot, sought to compete against Blizzard with an MMORPG adaption of the renowned Warhammer series. Due to its similar fantasy setting, holding orcs, magic, elves, and wizards, many thought it to be the direct competitor to World of Warcraft, and deemed it to be one of the first of many would-be WoW killers during the time. Another such game <laughs> wow was killers, The Age of Conan, Hyborian <laughs> Adventures, developed by Funcom. How many times have you guys heard WoW killer over the last, like, 20 years, bro. Look at us, man. Unbelievable. Who is mostly God. known in the MMO community for Anarchy Online in 2001. Oh its selling points would be impeccable graphics at the time and a new and fresh combat system in a dark and visceral world featuring the fatality mechanic where players could execute each other in brutal fashion, often described as the mortal combat of MMORPGs. And The Lord of the Rings Online by Turbine was also in development an MMO of one of the most celebrated franchises in nerd culture history certainly posed as a serious threat to Blizzard at the time. Though these contenders would be far off from release, the competition was beginning to get fierce, and to stave them off, the Burning Crusade had to be as exceptional as its predecessor. Months and months of doomsaying was put to the test. Did the Burning Crusade kill the World of Warcraft? Of course, the answer is no. The expansion was a major success, and the subscription base rose even more rapidly as players explored the dangerous reaches of the Outland. The classes evolved, and the gap between them was lessened while still retaining the features that made them special. The raids were more challenging, the bosses more complex, and offering more to conquer to the ever-growing subscriber base. And the raiding scene itself proved to be even more difficult for players than what they had encountered in the base game, with many lists today naming a plethora of Burning Crusade bosses as the hardest in the game's history, even over 14 years later, with some of them going unkilled by 99% of the player base until Blizzard intervened themselves to make them easier. The expansion today is remembered for having an extensive process for gaining entry to the raids called Attunement, a large series of story based did did you guys like i'm i'm thinking back in time to tbc did you guys have any problem with 99% of the player base not clearing content because i think back and i was a noob back then you know i was 14 or whatever and i never cleared um illidan and tbc but i loved tbc the fact of the matter is, I went to, to Iron Forge and I saw people with the glaives or I saw people with the, the Sash of Illidan or whatever, and I just thought they were badass and it gave me something to aspire to and it made me want to log in more because I haven't completed the game yet and there was more to do because it was hard and most people couldn't do it, but I would still log in and try so maybe one day I could do that or maybe I could get Gladiator and get the mount or the title um, from Arenas, which we ended up doing. Over 20 times, uh, 20, 20, 30 times. Anyway, um, the point is, I, I feel like it's not an issue to have 99% of the player base not do something. I feel like I actually, in a way, liked that. The, I think the problem is when people go to the forums and start complaining that like, oh, you know, this and that, and then they start dumbing down the content and make it so everyone can get in. I think that actually might be somewhat of a problem. Like, back in Wrath, how many people actually... Um, killed the final bosses back in TBC how many people killed the final bosses and back in classic era how many people killed the final bosses like 1% probably I think I would maybe argue that's a good thing 
I, people might disagree with me on this one, but I, I would argue that that's probably a good thing. I think having content that the top of the top do, and then the rest of the player base has something to aspire towards, something like a roadmap to kind of get there to achieve, but maybe we'll eventually never actually get there, but it gets them excited to play the game and inspect other players with cool, unique items, doing things that they maybe can't do is, is probably a good thing. Yeah, people are people will disagree with that, but I, I, I think I think back then all of these um expansions had that as a common denominator. I think that was important. I don't think Blizzard would ever go back to that model. Uh, too many people are gonna complain, like, well, like we can't do but like I, I think it's actually a decent model. Based quests served as an alternate form of character progression, and players would rarely find themselves with nothing to do. The PvP system had evolved to be more competitive with the new arena mode, where players create custom teams and battle in small-scale matches to the death, setting the stage for future competitive events in Blizzard's attempt to gain a foothold into the growing esports scene. The alliance for the f well, well, something else different too. Back then, the best players were way better than the worst players. The disparity between them was massive. Today, the um. The best players are still really good, but the worst players are actually a lot better on average. And that's because of platforms like YouTube and Twitch and Wowhead and the internet at large, because people can communicate and learn how to get good at something. Back then, none of these places to communicate existed, at least in the, the sense that they do today. So back then, the noobs were like noobs, right? The noobs like were like noobs, man. The noobs of today, like if you go Q and Arena right now, 2024, retail, Dragonflight, you're going to have priests like Shadow or Deathing Polymorphs. You're going to have people line of sight kind of decently appropriately. Back in 2006, 2007 playing Arena, bro, people were standing in the middle of the map, dazed and confused, lost. They didn't even know where they were. They're like, how did I even get here? They have no keybinds, no nothing. They didn't even have Shadow or Death on their damn action bars. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think that might be a big reason as to why uh, we've seen that change as well. The first time we got to experience a new class to them, the Shaman, and for the Horde, the Paladin, both with two new races added to the game, the Draenei and the Blood Elf. Five-man dungeons rose back to the forefront with the advent of the more challenging heroic difficulty. The expansion was packed with features and upgrades in its design, and stands as one of Blizzard's most critically acclaimed releases even to this day. The Lord of the Rings also saw its release in 2007 to serve as competition for World of Warcraft, and although receiving favorable reviews at the time, it couldn't compare to the size and scope of WoW, selling under 200,000 copies in the first months of release, and dwindling shortly thereafter. The game does still run today, supported by a niche community, and is hovering around 40,000 active players oh, at wow. the time of this video. Hmm. So, the Burning Crusade pressed on, undaunted, and in the following BlizzCon in August, the next expansion, The Wrath of the Lich King, was announced. Oh man, so high. Players were teased of the land of Northrend, where they had once visited in the events of Warcraft 3. It's here where they would face oh, off against Arthas Menethil as the Lich King. Ten more levels, a new class, the Death Knight, new zones, and siege vehicle combat were just a few of the many new features teased at the convention, and due to the success of the Burning Crusade, there was little question if it would be just as good. 2008 came, and on the one year anniversary of the release of the Burning Crusade, World of Warcraft hit a landmark 10 million subscribers, absolutely dwarfing any and all competition. Yeah. The up-and-coming contender, The Age of Conan, saw its release in May of 2008 and received generally positive reviews by the media and had sold over 1 million copies by the end of its release month, though ultimately, the game had failed to retain this impressive surge of subscribers. Although reviewers worldwide had praised the game, the player base condemned it as being unfinished and rushed as subscriptions quickly declined, and just one year later, Funcom would perform a fatality on 31 out of its 42 servers. Much like the Lord of the Rings Online, the game still holds a dedicated yet niche following, by and large falling short of being the WoW killer that many predicted that it would be. Oh, no. In 
July, in a bombshell announcement at the height of the game's popularity, the power of the dark side could be resisted no longer, as Blizzard's parent company, Vivendi, announced a merger with Activision. Already having gained a reputation for excessive monetization and driving franchises and developers to an early grave, many were dismayed at the news, fearing that the same would become true for their beloved franchises, including the World of Warcraft. Along with EA, they would gain the reputation of exploiting the player base to the fullest extent, and Spearhead's today one of the largest focus on cash shops and pay-to-win game design. And just one year later, in September of 2009, Activision Blizzard would release the Paid Faction Change Service, and one month after that, the Paid Race Change Service, along with in-game collectible pets. These services were- To be honest, I, I, I don't really have- uh many issues with faction change name change um and cosmetic purchases i have way 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 more of an issue with paid progression in the game so buying gold and buying character boosts right like max level character boosts and gold actually give you some power in the game to me the power is the issue cosmetics and uh cha like race changes lines toward and stuff i don't have as much or maybe any issue with but power bumps that's that's a problem we're seen by many as an affront on the integrity of the game and although not terribly impactful by themselves it was believed that they would serve as a gateway for more damaging paid services to be introduced later right in yeah. september of 2008 the release date for the wrath of the lich king expansion became set in stone for november of the same year just as it was back in 2006, the clock began ticking for players to finish their activities in the Burning Crusade before the content was made to be irrelevant, and due to the difficulty of the raiding scene in general, they had their hands full. There was quite a long drought between the final patch of the Burning Crusade and the launch of Wrath. Nearly 8 months, but players didn't seem to mind due to the success and lingering challenge that the expansion had to offer. Right, yeah, they Those were still who trying thought to otherwise the though sought to fill in this void with the release of the highly anticipated Warhammer Online, which saw its release in September. But was it enough to succeed where the Lord of the Rings Online and Age of Conan failed? <laughs> The game saw similar numbers to the Age of Conan, selling 1.2 million copies at launch and starting off with a solid subscriber base of 800,000 players. But similar to Funcom's debacle, it simply wasn't ready. Performance issues overshadowed what could yeah. have been a great experience, and players that have grown accustomed to World of Warcraft's finely tuned and polished combat system immediately noticed a lack of fluidity with yep. its gameplay. Addition. That's the one thing a WoW has always had going for it. It's just so fluid. And when you play WoW for years and years and years, and the movement is just so great, and the, the targeting system is great, and you can make macros to focus target, and it's just smooth, and then you play another game, and it's just janky, it doesn't matter how good the music is, the graphics are, the, the lore, the story. None of that matters when you hop in and you feel like you're... You're just like you can't move like you, the, the mechanics aren't there it's like i'm not even gonna give the rest of the game a chance because i can't move my character how it's supposed to be moved i'm going to literally log in see how the movement works and then quit and then these companies spend like millions tens of millions of dollars making these online games and they put the money into the music and the lore and everything and the, it's, it's damn janky gameplay you know what i mean finally the game would suffer from major scandals such as erroneously charging subscribers for years of game time in a single day, with some racking up charges and overdraft fees into the thousands. Similar to the Age of Conan, Warhammer failed to retain this early surge of players, and servers were shut down, and the subscriber base dropped even lower than that of their 2001 MMO, The Dark Age of Camelot. The game officially shut down in 2013, but many deemed it to be truly dead just one year after its release. Dang. All right, guys, we're 38 minutes into this video. Stranglethorn Veil is starts in 18 minutes. So I need to log into, I need to pause this World of Warcraft video to log into World of Warcraft um, because I have things to do. Um, <laughs> it's so ironic. We're going to continue that video. Um, it's a two hour video. We can do the STV event and just keep watching right after.